again, it's all it's all relative, guys. It's all situationally conditioned. Uh, it's all conditioned by the opponents, and th these are different things that you guys should definitely, definitely keep in mind uh, as we move forward here with the actual calculations. And what we set up is a very concrete example of how all this comes together. Right. So when calculating your expected value, it's not just the equity that you see in Poker Stove, as I hope of. Uh, successfully argued here, it is especially, yeah, the percentage that your your opponents will then let go of that open raising range when you are in 4-bet and 5-bet scenarios. And what I've set up is something, especially for good to be the king, um, which again is, is such a good comment. It's just, it's actually perfect to conclude our big stack strategy discussion and coaching here uh, for our purposes. And We'll look at a couple different scenarios, and I think with the background from the slides that I just showed you guys, this should all be quite clear. So what do we got here? Pot including the bets, right, when we're on to act. So it's 2150. The assumption here is that we're playing NL100, so that makes every single big blind exactly $1. Very clear and simple for our calculations here. Small blind post is 0.5, big blind post is one buck, right, or one big blind. We open raise to four big blinds with ace of diamonds, king of hearts, as we just had multiple times. Our opponent three bets us four times our open raise size. So we two bet, he three bets four times our bet. So we bet four big blinds, he re raises to 16. Total pot at that point is 2150. And here is the big point, guys. When you're holding ace king and you are big stacked, you've only contributed four big blinds. So your effective or your remaining stack is 96 bucks. You don't have to go four betting here. Quite honestly, it's uh, you know it's, it's not exactly what um, oh, good to be the king there was was asking, but you can also just flat. I mean, you can just call that three bet and you know play fitter fold on on the flop because you know when you're holding ace ace king offsuit or ace king suited for that matter. That it's highly unlikely, highly unlikely that your opponent is on a pair of aces or a pair of kings. And to be quite specific, it's when you hold an ace king, it's 203 to 1 against that your opponent is on a pair of aces or a pair of kings. So if you flop top pair, top kicker, holding ace king, right, you're good. <laughs> I mean, given a three bet, four bet pot versus a tight, not always, but again, please don't quote me out of context, but versus a relatively tight three better, you know, probably on now at this point, uh, queens or jacks, maybe tens, right? Um, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's how that looks. I have been myself in multiple pots where I'm on ace king and believe it or not, the ace of the king flopped, right? Which is gonna only happen, by the way, guys, about one time in three flops. So you're gonna whiff hard with that ace king about 66% of the time, keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, that ace and that king flopped, and then sure enough, the opponent flipped over, um, yeah, top set of kings or aces, and, and I'm holding the ace king myself, right? It's just mathematically off the chain, so it, it does happen, um, but it's very, very rare that that is the case. The other thing you need to be careful of is that when this guy is in three betting wider, like we just had in Poker Stove, Right, if he's if he's three betting with this range, and you just flat, then all of these small pairs are also on the list, right? All these suited connectors are also on the list. So that means when you flop that ace of that king, and you're you're playing a lag, basically a guy who's three betting a lot wider, he may have set up, right? He may have flopped his set. He may have flopped uh, open in a straight draw and a flush draw. He may have flopped the nut flush draw with a pair, right? All of these different high equity flops that that I showed you guys in the previous video. So again, take this into consideration, right? You you don't have to four bet here, okay? Um, although the wider the guy is three betting, the the better is it that you actually four bet to go ahead and take it down. Um, the tighter he's three betting, the more I'm inclined to to flat actually and not four bet when holding Ace King offsuit, especially, and then play it probably for pot control. <laughs> um, you can get into real trouble real quick with this ace-king hand. That's it's why it's so yeah, it's so difficult actually to play, especially out of position. But yeah, 
we'll look at we'll look at this scenario in a couple different ways. So you don't have to four bet. You can also just flat the three bet. Why not? You are getting if you just flat just under two to one odds. So in order to hit that flop and break even, you need about 36% equity. And with the rake uh, based at five percent and three bucks maximum, which is pretty standard at most websites, uh, most online casinos, then yeah, you're looking at um, pretty much 38% you need to hit that flop. And again, you've only got 33%. So you've got to make up the difference, right, um, with post-flop play. And again, also calling this, right, this 12, um, when you're holding small and mid pockets. So when you're calling for set value here, guys, in, in this scenario, when he raises relatively big here at 4x or four times your, your two bet, um, your call is 12 bucks, right? And you need eight times that, more or less 7.5 to one against is the odds against you flopping a set when you're holding a pocket pair. Now, you've already got 21 bucks here in the middle and at 96 with the dead money, you're good to go. All right, but that's gonna be right at break even. I mean, you're, you're probably gonna be making some, the versus tight three betters, you'll probably make up the difference, but you really gotta be able to, you really gotta assume that your opponent will play for stacks when you do flop your set, right? And that's that's also barring maybe three suited flop stuff like that that are also very dangerous. So yeah, when you're flatting here, and when you're flatting the three bet with a pocket pair, you're, you've got enough for the implied odds, but you gotta be pretty damn sure that your opponent will stack off when you do hit for this to even be a, a positive EV flat versus that three bet. So it's a bit of a bit of a side note um, concerning set mining, but it's also important. But okay, back to the story. We hold Ace of Diamonds, King of Hearts. We open raise to four. He three bets us to sixteen, so four times our open raise. Our call is twelve. Right? We need thirty six percent equity if we're going all in for that twelve, or we need thirty six percent probability of hitting a playable flop. All right. This calculator, this is for basically calculating just that just that one call. Um, the pot, when we do call, is going to be 33.50 and less the rate, right at 32. All right. In this case, of course, we don't just have to call, but we can also re-raise, right? We can 4-bet here. If we 4-bet, it's, yeah, with the uh, good to be the king's comment, the, the question is, if we 4-bet shove here for a full 96, What's the what's the scenario? Well, if our opponent, if we assume our opponent never folds, right? We have zero fold equity. What this calculator shows you, um, which I absolutely love, is the following: um, We show for ninety six and a heads up pot, right over the top for, as a four bet. The villain's call break even percentage is right at forty two percent. So that means your villain, when you show for ninety six and and you, you assume he's never going to fold, he only needs just over forty two percent to break even in the long run. Now, um, keep that in mind, right? That's, that's quite, yeah, that's, it's callable in a lot of, a lot of spots, uh, especially versus uh, Lucy Goosey and calling stations. Yeah, you shove over the top, you assume no fold equity, you're going to need, with the rake, 48%, just over 48% to break even in the long run. And with ace-king, yeah, the question is do you have it or don't you? That's a calculation for so-called no fold poker, uh, where you have zero fold equity, you shove over the top, you're gonna need 48% to break even in the long run. And what does that actually equate to in your opponent's total ranges? You've got ace king offsuit, and you assume your opponent is three betting, let's assume he's three betting here at 5%, nine's a better ace queen, and calling that entire range. You are plus minus zero EV right here versus that entire range. A lot of guys aren't going to be calling with nines or ace queen, right? They're going to be calling more over here and probably more over here. All right, increasing, increasing, uh, decreasing your equity, but increasing the fold equity that you're going to have, the probability that your opponent will fold. So again, this calculator above is showing you your equity breakdown, assuming 0% fold equity. It's really good for pot odds calculations, really good to know what your opponent is getting when you do shove over, shove over the top for an all-in break-even percentage that he'll need or she'll need to make that call. And it's also very good to know 
uh, also including the rate, right? You can define that differently, maybe 10%. Um, some live casinos, they have absurd rates of over 10 bucks, well over sometimes. Um, right, and that does change the equity that you need to break even. The BE is always a break even percentage when one villain, one opponent is calling. And now we want to look at the expected value calculator below, which does take into consideration fold equity, which is going to be more representative of actual play in real time online, or also you can use these calculators, of course, um, for your for your analysis of the hands that you played offline when you're maybe discussing with your friends or just checking it out yourself. Uh, very useful tool, and I'll explain it uh, again here in case you guys didn't see the initial videos. What we've got is the pot, and this is the total pot at the time we are considering either making this call here or shoving over the top. Okay, the assumption is that you're pushing all in, you're not making normal raise, you're shoving. Right, you're going all in, uh, so-called shove, so-called push, so-called jam, whatever. It means you push everything you have across the line, you go all in. The pot at the point of your decision is 2150. It's defaulted here as above. The effective stack, the H again is always a hero, um, you. <laughs> and that's 100, so it's 96 plus the four bucks that we made for the two bet. And the effective stack at the beginning of the round there is, is 100 bucks. All right, our bet, or if we post a blind, you know, you could make that one, whatever. Um, but actually, we're outside the blinds, and we raise it up with our ace-king offsuit to four big blinds, which is four bucks in this case. And the dead money, less the rake, I've already adjusted here, as you guys see. The small blind and the big blind post, plus our bet. All right, guys, and remember, when you are making a bet somebody re-raises you, the money that you've contributed to that pot is no longer yours. And you shouldn't see it like that. You should actually see it as if somebody else had bet it. All right, so part of the dead money is our open raise, actually. And we subtract then the $3 rate here, which is a T2. And we come up with 250 So at this point, we've made a two bet to four big ones. And when you subtract the rate, there's only 250 for us to pick up there as, as dead money. Good. Hero, if we assume again from the PowerPoint that he is raising... 3%, he's re-raising it, 3%, jacks a better ace-king. Our equity with ace-king offsuit versus that entire range is just at 40%. If we assume he never folds, so he three bets, jacks a better ace-king, and he calls 100% of his three betting range, we're gonna lose 17 big blinds every single time we push with the ace-king offsuit versus this assumed range and the assumption that he never folds after a three bet. Not a happy situation. So this is again a very large three bet size, relatively seen. Um, some guys will 3x that to 12. We'll look at different scenarios here in a second. But that's how the situation looks when you think he's three betting at 3% and never folding. You're going to lose 17 big blinds approaching infinity with the ace king offsuit versus that range in this scenario. And again, guys, for the equity, uh, you can either swing over here to our table and see, okay, ace-king offsuit is at 40, right at 40%. Uh, if you think he's calling this, you know, you got 40, stuff like that. Or, of course, uh, this table is, again, very, very useful for real-time play. I've got an extended version for big stack play, um, which is over here, as you guys see. And it includes, yeah, much wider, much wider ranges because, yeah, when you're not playing short stack, you'll be playing a lot wider ranges. All right, so yeah, you can either look at these tables or you can go to, again, poker stove, enter your 3%. They defaulted to nine to better ace king. We think that's more like this. So we make our 3% range defined as jacks of better ace king. Plug that in. And here you go again, 39.8% more or less equity. And again, this equity is, of course, to the river when you're shoving pre-flop versus that range. Okay, let's look at the situation now again where this time we do assume that he's going to fold some of this range. So he three bets us at 3%, right? And we assume that he's going to call versus our four bet shove with only queens are better, and that means paired queens, kings, or aces. That being the case, the equity when he does call is not 38 or 39, 40%. Uh, rather 30.8 percent and the fold equity I've just copied that there from the, the PowerPoint 
it is 50, let's call it 55.56, including the card removal. Now, again, you gotta you gotta really know your opponents, right? If he's not folding jacks or ace king, yeah, then you need to add, yeah, you need to make your equity here at 39% uh, with no fold equity. But if we assume here that our equity is 30.8, more or less 31% versus this range here, and we assume that he's gonna fold that much, we're still losing, guys. We're still losing 3.5 big blinds every time we make that shove. Still not good. So again, the tighter your opponent is three betting, the less the less likely or the less inclined you should be to four bet shove. And again, this is a really big four bet shove, right? I mean, he's at you know, 16, and you're you're basically way over betting that pot, right? You're more or less four or five times in the pot uh, for your shove. So that's that's an abnormally large bet size. And if you do again. Uh, referring to that comment there at YouTube, if you are four bet shoving with ace king, you need to be four bet shoving with your kings, uh, your your pairs of aces, kings and queens as well, um, so that they don't know that you're yeah you're only shoving with a more marginal hand, right? Um, a lot of guys aren't gonna four bet shove with aces or kings here because they want to get paid off, right? And they would just make a normal raise size to maybe 30, uh, 40 bucks, right? So whenever, yeah, whenever you're making these moves, guys, just making sh make sure that you're doing it <laughs> in the right spots versus the right opponents, and you're, yeah, you're changing it up a bit. All right, so it keeps you unreadable. Very, very good. That's the situation that we looked at in the PowerPoint. Uh, the other one that we looked at was right here. And again, yeah, three better at 8.4 percent, right? If he three bets us here at 8.4 percent, given this range, our equity with the Ace King lawsuit. When we come over the top, is 55%. And if we assume that he three bets and calls that entire range, so zero fold equity, uh, his three bet percentage and his four bet call percentage are exactly the same. Okay, <laughs> rarely the case, but whatever, especially when you're pushing this big. For example, purposes, when he does call down with that range, right? He raises the three bet at 8.4%, calls everything, right? So he never folds. We're going to be making 13 big blinds in the long run. Now that's that's looking much better. Let's say, for example, he raises he raises this amount and he's also folding, right? Which he will be. Let's say he calls us down with tens or better ace queen. Our equity versus tens or better or ace queen with ace king offsuit is already forty nine point two percent. Even with the fold equity, right? He's only calling us down with tens or better ace queen. We're still making ten and a half big blinds for that shove. So again, you guys are starting to see the point that I'm I'm hitting at here. The tighter of the three bet range, the tighter of the four bet range, the less likely, or four bet call range, the less likely you need to be to come over the top. The wider the three bet range, the more likely you need to be with ace king offsuit or ace king suited to go ahead and four bet it. That's the principle. All right. Again, <laughs> don't please don't quote me out of context. It's very, very game specific, very opponent specific, table specific. It has to do with history notes and all that kind of stuff too. But yeah, that's the long and the short of it. Let's look at a couple more just to yeah make this very clear to you guys. We then look at our HUD stats and we see that this guy is three betting at 39.8%, right? So uh, forgive me, <laughs> three betting at 3%, given, given us again the 39.8% equity when he never folds. Now, negative 17 big blinds. We assume that he's not gonna call queens this time. So he's letting a lot go. With the card removal, that's almost 78%. Without the card removal, we're holding ace king offsuit again. It's only seven or 70%. So that's that's a big difference. Anyway, so let's say he calls us down um, only with kings or aces when we shove over the top. And we're gonna have 18.5% equity there. However, he's folding a lot. And with the card removal, 77.78%, that's actually a positive EV move. A lot of assumptions here, guys. But yeah, he's open raising with a 3%. Jack's a better ace king. Only calling our four bet with kings, pair of kings or pair of aces. And we know that that's highly unlikely when we hold the ace king. So, anyways, he's folding 70, almost 78% of his three bet range. And even with that tight situation with ace king, we're in the green. Let us change this up a bit. Let's change the parameters. All right, let's say we don't 
we don't open raise to four big blinds, but three. It's possible. And this guy doesn't three bet us four X, but three X. So he raises it three times our open raise size of three. Now the amount to call here is only six. Right, we post it three, he raises it to nine. And again, question is, now our effective stack is of course 97. And here we can make that call just for hitting the ace or the king preflop. As you guys know, we're going to be hitting you know, right at 33% of the time. And we'll be looking good. So you can also flat here. You don't have to 4-bet that. All right. When you do 4-bet, OK, here's the pot. Right? Effective stack is here. Our blinds are now, our bet is 3 bucks. All right. And we're contemplating the shove over the top. So what's the dead money? Not 4, but 3. So only a, only a blind and a half versus his entire calling range. Forgive me, that's going to be 49.2% when he calls us down with tens of better ace queen. And yeah, given the fold equity with the card removal at 48.2, we're looking at seven big blinds. The question you got to ask yourself is is it worth a four bet shove given this pot size? Right? Um, it's a higher variance play if you get called down with a lot of pairs, you know you're behind. Again, with zero fold equity you need right at 49% to make that shove. So, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. Um, now, with yeah, a lot of players today, you know, they're raising, they're open raising 3x, uh, 3x to 4x, and 3 bets are more or less 3 times the open raise. So it's, it's quite standard these days. Um, let's say we go 4 open raise to four. It, the, another principle, guys, the tighter your ranges are, in general, your starting hand ranges, the the bigger you should be betting as an open bet. Um, also as raises, stuff like that. The more laggy you're playing, the more loose, aggressive you're playing, the smaller you want to make your, your open raise sizes, in general. All right, so let's say we're playing a tighter range here. We raise up the ace-king offsuit again to four X, four big blinds. The guy behind us, uh, behind us then re-raises us. He three bets us three times our race size. Pot is 1750 and our call is the difference here. All right? So our call will then be eight. Now, what happens what happens here? Well, not a lot of difference. You guys, you guys see how this is working out. Um, 96. Very good. I mean that the equity is more or less the same. Alright, and yeah the shove Let's see here, this is now four. Again, four. And yeah, it's I mean it's a similar scenario, very similar scenario. So um, again, you know, equity versus the calling range here, tens of better ace queen is just under fifty percent. Uh, we assume that he's he's opening with this and folding the rest. We're still at nine big blinds. So yeah, that's that's how you look long explanation to a relatively short request and question. The wider he's three betting, the more he is folding, the more apt you should be to four bet shove with your ace king offsuit. That's that's how that looks. And finally let's look at a scenario with a where we're facing the four bet, which um gonna be the king had also requested. So we essentially three bet the opponent four bets. He doesn't shove all in, but he four bets makes a normal four bet size. And we're both effectively big stacked. And then the question is, should we then five bet all in? And I think this is quite interesting. Uh, this is also gonna, you know, you're not gonna be making these enormous over bets, especially when the open race size is only only three big blinds and the three bet size is in three X. So uh, again, guys, remember the golden rule of betting that I've covered at my site and in various videos. Anytime you make a bet, raise, or call, that's going to commit more than half your stack. In general, you're not asking yourself, should I make that call? By and large, you're asking yourself, should I push all in or fold? So, five bet scenario. Here we go. In a 100, small blinds, 0.5, big blind is $1 exactly. The opponent raises it up. Yeah, tighter opponent raises it up to 4x. You, three bet, basically three timing his open raise. So you raise it, you three bet it to 12. The villain, your opponent who open raised, who two bet, now makes a four bet of 
let's say, three times your bet. So he raises it to 36 total. All right, so he raises it a total of 32 to 36. Hope that's clear. Our effective stack size is then 88, and the amount to call is actually not the full 32 because we've done the 12. Rather, let's call it 36 minus 12, <laughs> 24. And yeah, that looks much better. All right, you always, guys, if you're entering you know, the amount to call here and using my calculators, just make sure you come over here and look at the pot with an all-in and one villain calling you. Right? It should be exactly the effective stack size plus the blinds, which it is here, and minus the rake at the second line. Very good. So our amount to call is 24. All right, so he, he four bets us. Right? Pot at the point of our move is right at 50 big blinds. And our call is 24. So again, when we make that call, we're not committing half of our stack, so we could theoretically make a four bet call here with our ace king offsuit. And this is kind of continuing our story. Right? You have all these different options at your disposal. You don't have to five bet shove here. You don't have to do it. Uh, you got the ace king. You got you know you got four bet, and yeah, it's, it's a dance play. You know five five bet seems sometimes when you're super deep stack, you know six bet stuff like that. But you can flat this. Look, you flat the twenty four on the fifty, and you need more or less 30, 33, 34 percent with a rake to break even in the long run. I.e., in this case, since we're not going all in to hit a playable flop, you got the ace of diamonds, king of hearts, and ace x offsuit hand, ace king offsuit hand. You're gonna hit either that ace or that king, right at one time and three, right. So you're 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 more or less good. You can play that to reduce variance. Um, you hit the ace of the king, you know. You shove. Uh, you miss. You let it go. That's gonna be a wash in the long run. Probably a slight loser, uh, given the rake. And it may even be a slight loser when you're playing other savvy players who are also raising with ace x hands, and then they push you off on the flop. So all these things you should definitely take into consideration. But yeah, making this call as a as a four bet call is right on the line of doable <laughs> with your ace x uh, with your ace king offsuit. All right, let us answer the final question there of good to be the king from YouTube and look at this five bet scenario. So recap: small bet, a small blind, big blind. Opponent raises it up to four big blinds. You three bet it to twelve. It comes over the top. 32 more, your call is 24 if you're just going to call it flat, the 4-bet, or <laughs> you can 5-bet all in, and that's our scenario right here. So how should we update the expected value calculator for all in shoves? So pot, exactly the same, effective stack, and again guys, this is at the beginning of the round, uh, it's the way that you input this. This is another way to see this is basically the pot when you make your shove is the amount of money, the amount of big blinds that you will receive when your opponent folds. That's a way to look at that. So if we five bet and he folds, we're going to take down 49.5 big blinds right now. The effective stack, uh, your effective stack in this case at 100 big blinds, is essentially what you can get from your opponent in addition to any dead money that's out there. Basically any money that doesn't um, belong to your opponent's stack. Alright, so yeah, we three bet it to 12, so that's our bet. And the dead money at this point is going to be the blinds, our three bet, less the three bucks for the rake. Right, so 10.50. If we're five betting and assuming he calls everything in his range, approaching infinity, you know, we're going to be plus minus uh, negative nine uh, big blinds, right, is an expected value for that 5-bet shove when he never folds. 4-betting 10s are better, and we're at 49% versus the entire range. 10s um, are better ace-queen, never folds, we're still good. Although it's, yeah, I mean, 9.5, I mean, that's that's big actually, <laughs> EV-wise. 9.5, uh, over 9.5 over big blinds. And yeah, again, the wider he 4-bets in this case, and the more he folds, the higher this number, the higher our expected value goes. The tighter he is, or she is, uh, let's say he's only raising it up, uh, queens are better. Let's say we see a four bet, and this is very often the case, guys, um, especially at the low and middle stakes. We see a four bet percentage of only one and a half, right? REV is all of a sudden just 
yet again. He, of course, uh, rarely folds the queens there, right? And there you go. Um, 20, yeah, negative 27 big blinds is an expected value for that shove versus such a tight four better. Now, if we think he would actually four bet queens are better and then actually fold the queens <laughs> for one third of that range, then that's still only here, right? And we're still losing money even when he drops the queens. If he drops the queens and the kings, uh, again, without uh, card removal here, let's just assume 66, and then we're getting back into back in the positive. But that means somebody's got to be able to four bet with queens, kings, or aces, and then fold the queens of the kings when you shove, and he's only got to call, um, you know, and break even at, uh, he only needs 32% equity, say, to break even in the long run. So that's just rarely going to be the case. And while we're at it here, uh, doing a little poker math in 3-bet, 4-bet, and 5-bet scenarios, I did promise that we would look at just a 3-bet shove, so let's do that briefly. Small blind, big blind. He raises it up to 4, and we come over the top. So our call would be 4 here, 96, right? So if we go ahead and shove for 100 big blinds over the top with our ace-king offsuit, um, that's just an enormous overbet, and that's you know I can't really advise that in most in most scenarios. Um, you know, with the rake, you're going to need to be over 50 percent in yeah most most situations, and yeah, I mean if he calls you down with tens or better, ace queen, you know, that's yeah you're just right at that. So a normal normal three bet I would I would advise before going ahead and three bet shoving when you are big stacked. Just to point that out. Um, down here, I've created a steal and resteal set of calculators, actually. Uh, this is the fold to a steal in the big blind, um, expressed as a percentage, fold to the steal in the small blind, and you on the, on the button steeled in three bucks in our NL100 example, so you raise it up to three. It's folded around to you, you're holding your ace-king offsuit, ace of diamonds, king of hearts here to be very specific, and with these fold to steal ratios of your opponents in the small and the big blind, you can steal raise up to three and then fold when they come over the top all day long and you'll still be just better than, um, and you'll be making money. Um, that's that's how that looks. The way I've set this up is then for the yeah the situation where either the, the villain in the small, the small blind or the villain in the big blind re-raise. So they re-steal and in this case, small blind folds, the big blind re-raises to 9. Your effective stack is 96, it's defaulted. And your call, if you're going to call that flat, is in 32.43%. Yeah, Alright, if we want to plug that in up here, it's the same situation. We make it 3, he comes over the top to a total of 9. And there you go, it's exactly the same Right when using the pot odds calculator break-even equity you need is then to make that call all in 32.43%, same percentage here, with the rake, 34.14, exactly the same. So yeah, you guys can, can play with that a bit. Um, the effective stack is then 96, and this is, a, again, the case of 4-bet shoving all in, right? So if you 4-bet with the 96 remaining, this steel resteal calculator kind of works that out for you. That's kind of automated to what you enter above. And yeah, you're going to need... Uh, you know, if the villain in the, the big blind calls, you need 48.36%, look at that, and 49.1% with the rake. You make a steal raise to three, you're holding ace-king offsuit. Player in the small blind re-steals, makes a three bet to nine big blinds. The player in the big blind position then flats that three bet, and you come over the top for a four bet shove for your remaining 96. The player in the small blind needs 43, pretty much 43 and a half percent equity, 44 with the rake to make that call all in and break even in the long run. So yeah, then you would plug in essentially yeah, this four betters range and you would see how you work out with your holding. The player in the big blind of course needs exactly the same percentages because they both invested the same amount. This um, underneath is when your hero, when you shove all in, the break-even percentage that you need when they both call is going to be just under 33%, and that yeah, makes good sense.
And yeah, these are a couple of the tools that I've set up for yeah, you guys. And yeah, please feel free to work with this a bit, uh, check it out, and drop me a line if any of it's unclear, if you need some additional uh, input on that. So underneath, yeah, this has been up the entire time. This is basically just a generic um, you know, number of outs that you might have post-flop and the probability of hitting either on the turn, the river, or when you shove all in on the flop, hitting on either the turn or the river. Respect to probability or completion probability and the odds against that happening. So that was everything that I wanted to cover uh, concerning fold equity and expected value calculations. I know it was a bit math intensive, but I think it is absolutely necessary for any player who's looking to really get to the next level and become an expert in the shortest amount of time. Again, the long and the short of it is when you're four bet shoving or five bet shoving, you can do so when you're holding ace king offsuit in a very concrete example, much more profitably when your opponent, your villain, is three betting or four betting with a much wider range and then folding a greater percentage of that. I think that makes good sense. And back to Good to be the King's final comment with that 7% idea. He's saying that he's he's 4-bet or 5-bet shoving when he sees that 7% uh, range in his statistics. And I would say you're gonna be you're gonna be looking good when you're absolutely certain <laughs> that uh, your opponent is set you on a 7% range. Right, as defined, let's say in general, as the progress of default would be here. Eights are better, ace 10 suited, king 10 suited, ace queen off suit are better. Again, same hand, and you're already at 52.4% versus that entire range. Now, that same 7% again probably could look like this. I would say. And then, yeah, you're just behind him. But again, it's a coin toss. There's a bit of dead money in there. You'll be plus minus nothing <laughs> in the long run uh, when you're shoving that. But again, they're going to be folding a lot of that. And that's where our entire discussion on fold equity yeah, came to be. That's, that's super important. Again, this is Dylan. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely hope it was useful for your games. Till then, on behalf of the entire team here, all the best and best of luck at the tables.